Hello. So a couple of months ago, I literally got to realise one of my childhood dreams. Marshall Amps were kind enough to invite us to go up to their factory in Milton Keynes, which is the original one they've been in since the 80s, for a little tour round to see how they make everything and to also view their multi-million pound newly built recording studio. Unfortunately, I couldn't really show you around the factory. Partly, I didn't really want to get in people's way whilst they were building the amazing amps that you may eventually buy, but also because they were building some top secret things that you guys don't even know about even today. However, the bit I can show you is their brand new multi-million pound recording studio that they've built on site. Now this thing is absolutely decked. So Marshall started a record label a few years ago um, and since the record label started we've also started a booking agency. So it was a natural progression to think well we're signing acts to a label and we're booking them, we should probably have somewhere for them to record. So this space that we're in now was called the theatre and it was the place we kept all our loan stock. Um, and it's had a stage and it was a place we used for local events, we used for bands to come and rehearse. So it was a space that was ready to be turned into a recording studio really. So we started that just before the pandemic, um, which obviously caused a bit of an issue in delays, but no, we're really pleased that the studio is here and has been here for about a year now and has been turning out some, some excellent stuff. When we built the studio, we wanted to do it first time, right first time, and to give ourselves future proof as much as possible. So we already had the building, which was a great help. Um, and we went from there. So we've wired the building in a way which hopefully makes it future proof. We have a radio link on the roof, for instance, that's um, a point to point radio link with the stadium. So when we had bands playing over in the stadium in the summer, we could record them here across the radio link. We've tried to do the antithesis of gatekeeping. We've tried to make sure we've got super premium gear here that is available for people to use and included in the price. So I'm here in the live room, and honestly this place is amazing. I mean, it was originally built as a venue, so it's huge, but yeah, there's no, like, it's so well soundproof, there's like hardly any reverb, and you know, in the middle of this huge room, it's almost kind of weird. Um, they have so much cool stuff in here as well. I mean, in, apart from all the amps you can see behind me, they're not just any amps. I mean, firstly, that JCM 900 there was the one that Spinal Tap used on their Glastonbury performance that goes up to infinity, which is a kind of a really cool thing to just have sat in the middle of a load of different amps. I mean, for example, behind me there, we have Paul Weller's combo. We also have an amp that's built with the mesh from the original red curtains in the theatre here. I mean, there's just so much history in this place, even in their studio. The console, is a 1974 Neve 0408. So we know this was in Patho Marconi Studio D. We know its history, we know it did Rolling Stones albums, we know it did Thin Lizzy albums. We know that it's been used extensively by huge rock and roll stars. They are the, the seminal rock and roll console and kind of the sound of all the records you love is one of these. All the classy warmth that you need, plus punch, and then going into you know, Pro Tools or the, whatever DAW you choose that gives you kind of the the melding of the, the, the modern and the, the vintage as well. Yeah. Just like our amps. <laughs> you can cut it out. 
So just to show off how prestigious this place really is, not only have you got a Neve desk from the 1970s in there, but you've also got this, which is George Michael's own piano that was donated to a charity after he passed away and was subsequently bought in the charity auction by Marshall for the studio. Now, one of the things that the charity didn't want was for this to be locked away in a private collection. So it's in here in a studio that anyone can come in and play. I mean, I just played that on George Michael's piano. We've got really premium gear that you don't pay a premium price for when you come and use a studio. The whole point is it's there for people to use and it continues its legacy. We're going to sit and have a little play through some of the amps that are in here, some of the rare gems they have, such as a Yngwie Malmsteen head, as well as some of the Marshall Astoria amps, which were boutique hand-wired, very limited in the numbers that were produced. <laughs> Marshall are a company who obviously have a huge, illustrious history. I mean, they're one of the godfathers of the modern amplifier as we know it today. So you can imagine their museum is stacked with musical history. And quite frankly, it was unbelievable to come and actually see some of the pieces they have in there in the flesh. They've got their original JTM 45 on display, which they happened upon a few years afterwards by pure chance because someone traded it into them. They opened it up and then figured out it was number one. And one of the things that I thought was the coolest thing that they had on display is they had the original Spinal Tap amp that they made for the movie that goes up to 11. I literally was able to turn the original amp all the way up to 11 and that was one of the coolest moments of my life. My life's been pretty boring though. Honestly, since I was a teenager and I saw the stacks and stacks of Marshall amps behind some of my favorite rock bands like ACDC and Guns N' Roses, I have been in love with Marshall amps. And so getting to go there and seeing where they were made and seeing some of the amazing pieces in their museum was honestly, it made the teenager in my past insanely happy. 12 year old Chris would absolutely freak out that I was given the opportunity to do this. I was honestly, I was in my element. It's a mad privilege. It's one of those things that perhaps you, the traffic's been bad, the kid drop off has been awful, and you get into work and you oh God, I'm in, I've got stuff to do, and you walk through the door and you go, oh no, hang on, I'm at Marshall Amplification. And it's um, to be part of a place like this, and we went around the factory earlier with you guys, and as you see, like, everything is made from scratch here by hand, by craftspeople who really care about the products and who really put their heart and soul into the products. And I get quite soppy about it because we make tools for art. The amps that we are making in there today, they could be on a stage next year and a kid could go to that show and see that band and hear the guitar or, and that could change their life. Or we could make an amp that goes into someone's bedroom and 
they write the song that changes their life. We do things that make art and we make the tools for that, which is a, a real privilege. The goal of the music division of Marshall, so our record label, our, our booking agency and the studio is to be available for the next generation of artists. Honestly, I had the most amazing day. It was truly a dream come true. Thank you so much to Adam and Ollie, who looked after us the whole day and showed us round and brought in all these crazy cool amps for me to absolutely not do justice on. But anyway, thank you so much again to Marshall for inviting us up there to look around their factory and their studio. Honestly, it was an amazing experience. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to see more things like this, and we will see you very soon. Bye Marshall Amps, everyone. <laughs>